This right here is the brand new Nikon Z8. Now, Nikon has very generously allowed us to play with this for a few days to put it through its paces along with the help of Nikon ambassador Jerry Guiones and our good friend Sharon Calafiori from Fiori Films. We're gonna be doing a few different tests with this. We're going to be doing some wedding photography and videography. We're going to be doing some low light sort of scenes, some food photography, and of course horses because everybody likes horses. Now we're gonna be doing most of this just immediately outside of New York City, but before that, we're gonna be above it. So we're here in Long Island right now. We're doing a wedding shoot. We've got Jerry as our wedding photographer. He's setting up back there. And we've got Sharon as our wedding videographer. Uh, we were doing some stuff outside, but we got rained out on. So now we are in this wonderfully rustic yet classy looking barn. But all of us right now are shooting with the Nikon Z8. And in order to talk about the Z8, we've really got to talk about the Nikon Z9 because with very few exceptions that I'll talk about a little bit later, this camera is essentially the Z9 30% smaller and almost a pound lighter, but otherwise it has pretty much the exact same feature set. So what that means is you are getting the exact same full frame 45.7 megapixel stacked sensor. You are getting the ability to shoot up to 20 frames per second in RAW. And if you're willing to shoot 11 megapixel JPEGs, this can do 120 frames per second in JPEG. And it also inherits all of the video features that the Z9 launched with, as well as the ones that came in the future firmware updates, which means this can shoot up to 60 frames per second 4K ProRes RAW internally, or it can shoot a whopping 60 frames per second, 8K, 12-bit, and RAW internally on this camera. Now, this is truly a hybrid camera in the sense there's just as many features for the photography side as there are on the video side. So we're gonna be kind of talking about them in two different categories. So to start with on the photography side, we're gonna be getting Jerry's input on it. Now, Jerry is a wedding photographer. He has done this a hundred times probably way more than that. So he knows the workflow and the cadence of how to shoot a wedding. So we're gonna be getting his input, kind of seeing what he observed using the camera for a little bit. Uh, so let's take a look. So I'm here with Jerry Guiones right now. Jerry is a world-class wedding photographer. So far we've been shooting some wedding photography and doing some videography, but as a Nikon ambassador as well, how has the experience been shooting on the Z8? I, uh, I absolutely love it. I mean, coming from the Nikon mirrorless system and shooting with the Z6 and the 7 and the Z9, with this one, it was seamless because all the buttons are in the same spot. The ergonomics are uh, incredible. And I call this a sweet spot. Yeah. In terms of, I mean, the Z9 is incredible, but I don't need such a big body for weddings. If anything, I often will hold this camera above my head. I want to shoot a little bit lower um, and I want to carry it all day with no fatigue. And it actually ends up being a great thing for me. Also, like if you actually see me hold the camera in my hands, the three fingers fit that actual handle perfectly. Yeah. Leaves room for the, for the shutter speed there. It's just really nice. It's, it's that perfect sweet spot, as I call it. I mean, for me, I shoot weddings, portraits, fashion, boudoir, do filmmaking. So for me, a small form factor is important for filmmaking and a small form factor is actually important for, for wedding photography because I'm carrying around this the whole day. So I learned very recently you've been shooting weddings for 30 years? 30 I don't years. want to age you. Yes. <laughs> um, so you've obviously done your fair share of weddings. Sure. Um, how was the workflow and like the cadence of working with this camera compared to what you've usually shot on? It sounds like it kind of fit in pretty succinctly, but I was curious if you had any. Well, it's funny because people have asked me about this and in interviews and just different things with the Z8 and I call it the most exciting, unexciting release. And why is it the most exciting, unexciting release? Is because if, if you have the power of the Z9 and all the features that we've loved and been used to the last year and a half in a smaller body, I'm like, it's predictably good. Yes. So if you've seen reviews of the Z9, and now it's in a smaller body, it's great. I'm the first one to tell you that the camera is only, the, only a tool and you make the difference. Um, ultimately though, this is a better tool. Yes. It, like it's a better tool. It just, it's more efficient. Like I said, it's more fun. It gives me freedom, gives me confidence. For me personally, this is the one that suits my style. So we obviously have a few different shoots coming up that we're gonna be doing a little bit later, but so far for this wedding shoot, what has been your sort of favorite setup or favorite shot that you've gotten so far? Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, that, that pathway with the, uh, the Christmas lights in the background. Yes. So I even though it was during the day, we got this sort of beautiful bokeh effect with the lights in the background, um, those intimate moments in the foreground as well, and just having a great time. And we used the light was around us. I mean, the lighting is overcast and people think it's quite easy to photograph in overcast. I actually 
beg to differ. I, I feel like you have to constantly remind your clients to bring their chin up, turn their face to the light. So those moments interacting, they're a beautiful couple, they're a real couple. But for me, those moments were, were really, really fun. Um, and even actual the shots where, where they were lying down uh, in amongst the chul and that beautiful texture that sort of just led your eye into that moment, I think it was really, really cool. All right, so it finally stopped raining, so we came outside to take the opportunity to shoot some more. Jerry is back there still shooting them. Uh, and while he's doing that, I want to talk about the photography specs on this, the nitty gritty on this. Now, the good news is, if you're familiar with the Z9, pretty much all of the same specs apply to the Z8. In fact, the Z8 can do one or two things that the Z9 can't do. But right off the bat, the Z8 has the exact same X-Speed 7 processor, the same 45.7 megapixel full frame stacked sensor. So you're getting the exact same image quality on this. Now in regards to burst modes on this, you're also getting the exact same thing on the Z9. You can shoot 20 frames per second raw on this, 30 frames per second full size JPEGs, 60 frames per second DX format, and 120 frames per second JPEG at 11 megapixels. So you have a ton of options and a ton of latitude for how you want to shoot on this thing. Now the Z8 also inherits the exact same autofocus algorithms that the Z9 had, which means 3D tracking is here on this and it works exactly the same way. You get animal, person, and vehicle focusing modes. Now one thing that is brand new to the Z8 that even the Z9 doesn't currently have is the ability to shoot an HEIF or high efficiency image file. Now the nice thing about this is you're getting the same file sizes as JPEGs, but they have much more color information. It's 10-bit as opposed to 8-bit. So there's not really a downside to shooting this way. And you can shoot in essentially the exact same burst rates in HEIF as you can in JPEG. So it's another option you get with the Z8. If you want more image quality than a JPEG, but you don't want to take up the space shooting raw, HEIF is a great middle ground for that that you get in this now. So now we're here at our second location of the day. We're gonna be out here shooting some equestrian shenanigans because everybody likes horses, right? We're gonna be testing the animal eye tracking autofocus, but also we're gonna be testing some of the high frame rate video options here because this camera can shoot up to 120 frames per second in 4K, but you can also do, as I mentioned, ProRes RAW in 60 frames per second and 8K N RAW at 60 frames per second as well. So we're gonna be mixing and matching, doing some tests here. So let's take a look. All right, so I already mentioned the headline video specs, which was that NRAW 8K 12-bit internal at up to 60 frames per second, and the other flexible option being that ProRes RAW in 60 frames per second 4K, which is also 12-bit and internal. But you do get other options as well. You can shoot at up to 120 frames per second on the Z8. That's an H.265, that's also 10-bit. You also have some 8-bit options if you really need to save space on this guy. One thing that was really cool that I literally discovered as we were playing with this camera today was if you're shooting ProRes RAW, by default, it'll also automatically create a 1080p proxy for you. So that doesn't show up until you're actually putting it into your computer, but the fact that that is just kind of built into it is really, really handy. But it's also important to note that this comes with some very thoughtful video assist features to help you shoot your video. You get things like waveforms and histograms and focus peaking and zebras. You get a lot of features that not necessarily every hybrid camera is going to give you, but if you're a video shooter, these are absolutely useful features to have. Some of these you only usually get in dedicated cinema cameras. But the fact that you're getting it in this hybrid camera, especially considering it can shoot in up to 8K and RAW, it's really nice of Nikon to give this to us. I'm sure I sound like a broken record at this point, but truly, if you know the video features, the amazing stuff that you got on the Z9, you're getting those exact same specs in the Z8. There is literally no sacrifice to the video specs that you're getting. Once again, the NRAW 12-bit at 60 frames per second, ProRes RAW 4K 60 frames per second, also 12-bit, up to 120 frames per second. The Z8 is just as functional as the Z9 was. Right, I'm here with Sharon right now. She is a wedding filmmaker. We've been shooting with the Z8 today. And um, what are your first impressions of it as a wedding filmmaker? I love this thing. So today we were shooting uh, horses, right? Yes. The, the autofocus completely blew me away. I was actually on uh, just like a scene, like scene detect. So I was able to just like point my camera where I needed it to go. And it literally just caught on to, it knew what to catch on to. It caught on to the rider's face. I'm not used to shooting 
uh, autofocus. I usually uh, shoot with peaking. I never count on autofocus because when we're shooting live events, the autofocus is not always so reliable. For mission Balances critical are... stuff like a wedding, I assume, like if the autofocus jumps at the last minute, yeah. you can't trust it. No, you can't trust it. Uh, I mean, for us, especially, you know, when they think there's so many different moving parts in a, in a, in a live event, wedding, um, where things are just like crossing your lens constantly. Yeah. So you're con it's just easier for, for me personally, even with dancing and stuff to just have it on peaking and, and work that way. So I am not used to this level of autofocus. I cannot wait to pull in the footage. I was shooting in 120p, um, with the, the riders were jumping. And so I was kind of just, I, I wasn't even wide. I was, I was on the 80, on the 85 and I was yep. pretty tight and just tell it like, okay, go. And it, boom, it hopped on the rider's eye and stayed on the rider's eye till that, till the rider was out of frame. Yeah. So that was, I mean, that was crazy. That's amazing. It was crazy. All right, we are now here at our final location of the day. We're doing portrait photography here along the beach. I got Jerry back there who's taking some portraits. But right now we're gonna talk about finally how this camera is actually not like the Z9 because obviously I've been harping over and over again how this camera is so much like the Z9 in a smaller camera. But there are obviously some differences. The first one, as you may have surmised already, is gonna be with battery life. Now the Z9 had absolutely fantastic battery life. And with this, you are not getting quite the same numbers. However, at 4K 60 frames per second, it is still rated to get 125 minutes of recording and 8k 30 you can still get up to 95 minutes of recording so even if it's not quite what you got in the z9 it still has very good battery life and in fact Nikon has partially mitigated this because they're gonna be selling a battery grip that you can get with this. And with the battery grip, you're gonna get 1.8 times the battery life that you would get on it. On the Z9, it takes ENEL 18D batteries. And on the Z8, it takes ENEL 15C batteries. So you're not gonna get the same battery life out that you would out of the Z9. But the nice thing is, if you're a Nikon D850 shooter, this does take the same battery. So if you're upgrading from that camera, you probably don't even need to buy anything extra. Another small difference between the Z8 and the Z9 comes with weather sealing and durability. Now, this camera is fully sealed and gasketed, and in fact, its durability exceeds that of the D850, which once again, Nikon kind of sees this as the spiritual successor for, but it doesn't quite hit what the Z9 got. Now, you can still shoot at this in uh, temperatures up to negative 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. It is still incredibly weather, splash, drip resistant, dust resistant as well, but if you want the truly absolute best you can get, the Z9 does exceed it by a little bit. Another difference between the Z9 and the Z8 comes in the form of the media it accepts. Now the Z9 took two CF Express Type B cards in two different slots, whereas on the Z8, you've got one CF Express Type B card slot and then a standard SD card slot. So this is kind of a give and a take. Obviously, standard SD cards are more readily available. They're a little bit smaller. Um, you may prefer to just have to bring one type of media with you at all times if you want. Another slight difference is with the ports that you have available. But once again, they're pretty similar. You do not get the PC Sync port like you did on the Nikon Z9, so keep that in mind. But the other difference is the Z9 had an RJ45 port, so if you wanted to plug your camera with an Ethernet cable into your computer for tethering or anything like that, you had the option to plug that in directly. On the Z8, you get two USB-C ports actually. So one of the USB-C ports is just for power delivery, and the other one is for connectivity. But we have confirmed you can take a USB-C to Ethernet cable and still essentially use this camera as if you were using the RJ45 port on the Z9. It's an extra dongle you have to carry with you, but on the flip side, you're getting the flexibility of a different USB-C port that can connect with other peripherals. So once again, another difference to keep in mind on this one. Otherwise, the IO is essentially the same. You've got a full-size HDMI port, you've got your headphone and mic jack, but those are the only real considerations you need to make between getting the Z8 and the Z9. You're getting the same sensor, same photo and video specs. It's really just a matter of your battery, IO connectivity, your media options that you want, and what degree of weather sealing you're looking for. It has been a long day shooting with the Z8, but the important thing is we reached the conclusion right when Golden Hour hit, so this looks very pretty. But regarding the Z8, I think Jerry kind of hit the nail on the head when he said, and I'm paraphrasing him here a little bit, but it's a predictably great camera. I think that's accurate because if you like the Z9, you're going to like the Z8 because it is ostensibly the same camera. We definitely put this camera through the ringer today. We shot some wedding photography. We did equestrian fun shenanigans. We did 
restaurant shooting, we're here out on the beach, we've done portrait photography, and this camera has handled it once again predictably very well because we're getting the exact same performance that we're getting in the Z9. So if you're a wedding photographer, if you shoot sports and wildlife, or even if you're a videographer for events, narrative work even, documentary work, the frame rates, burst modes, and resolutions that you can get in this camera are robust enough to pretty much handle any one of those tasks. So if you were considering the Z9 and once again holding off on it, the Z8 is definitely worth taking a look at. But what do you think of the Nikon Z8 and what would you shoot on this? Let us know in the comments below. Seriously, reread them. I'm Nick with B&H. Stay creative.